Is there a logic to history? Plato thought that there was a philosophical logic to history, at least if you understood the nature, if you understood the souls of the people that shaped a political society, you could understand its progression. And the place where he discusses this is in Book 8 of, of his Republic. Book eight, in Book 8 of the Republic, Plato says, the first kind of regime is a regime that is based on honor. It's men that fought in wars, that judge themselves and judge others based on the capacity to sacrifice for oneself and for one's nation. Plato says that the men of honor, however, have children, and the children look at their fathers and they realize that their fathers did not always receive the financial reward that they should have gotten for the sacrifices that they made for their family and for their country. And so this gives birth in the souls of the children of the men who love honor. This gives birth in their souls to a love for money. They try to make the money that will enable them to give the honor to their fathers that they think their fathers deserve. And so they commit themselves, rather than simply speaking, seeking honor, they start to seek money as a way of buying honor. And Plato says over time, eventually this will give birth to oligarchy. The regime of those whose souls are dominated or give excessive emphasis to making money. Now, the children of the oligarchs, they look at their parents and they say to themselves, if my parents have given in to the money-making desire in an unrestrained way, why can't I follow my other desires in an unrestrained way? And so the children of oligarchs tend to want to give equal access to all of their passions. And in giving equal access to all of their passions, the children of the oligarchs become Democrats. For democracy is essentially a society in which free reign, you might say, is given to, as Plato calls it, the multicolored passions of one's soul. Over time, a kind of competition will, will develop back and forth between oligarchy on the one hand and democracy on the other. Because eventually the Democrats, as they get older, they realize, I need money if I'm going to feed my passions. And within the context of this debate or this competition that takes place between oligarchs and Democrats, Eventually, the demagogue appears. The demagogue is someone who appeals to the Democrats in their competition against the oligarch, promising that he can eliminate the, demo, eliminate the oligarchs and give a final victory to the Democrats. But of course, once the demagogue takes power, he not only eliminates the oligarchs, he eliminates the Democrats as well and establishes a tyranny. I think in understanding this basic progression of regimes, we, can have, we, have, we have before ourselves a great lens for understanding the history, I think especially of the United States, but also of Western European nations after the Second World War. The first generation was the generation of the men who made sacrifices, the great generation. They were followed by the baby boomers, those who sought to make a lot of money in order to make society successful. This was followed by the Cultural Revolution of 1968 and the installation of democracy. And we find ourselves to this day in the competition between democracy and oligarchy, especially in the United States and in Western European countries. Thank you. Mm -hmm.